There are a great many variations on the classic recipe of mushrooms and pasta, but what I'm showing here is a method of achieving a great depth of flavor using a type of base sauce that I've never talked about before now. You can make this with ordinary mushrooms, but for a stellar dish, you need wild mushrooms and preferably porcini. This is the frozen vegetable section in a typical Russian supermarket. As you can see, there are many different packages of frozen wild mushrooms for sale, ranging from the cheap varieties on up to the most expensive, which are the small porcini mushrooms for about $3 a package in American money. I have a nonstick pan that's already fairly hot. I'm going to put a little bit of oil into this, but not really very much, maybe a tablespoon. And I'm going to put in uh, onion, about 90 grams of onion, and 120 grams of tomato. These are cut into very large pieces, as you can see. And We'll put lid over this. Now, now that they're already cooking, I'm going to turn the heat down. It was on 8. I'm turning the heat down now to 6 out of 1 to 10. We're going to let this cook for quite a while. We actually want some blackening on this. And it's been about 4 minutes. I'm just going to check it. I know, it. I know it's not ready yet, but I just want to show you. Check it every once in a while. Okay. It's cooked, but it's certainly not black. You can assume all the other pieces would be about the same. So we're going to flip it back over and keep going. Now it's been close to eight minutes, and I'm going to check this out. Okay, now we're getting some now we're getting some color here. So I'm not not done by any stretch of the imagination, but we're making some progress now. Okay. Keep going. After about 12 minutes of cooking, you can see there's quite a bit of fond on the bottom, some nice blackness, which is what you want. I'm adding the crushed garlic clove in and deglazing it with the white wine. Just stir it around, scrape the bottom, try to pick up as much of that as you can. You can turn the heat off now, let it cool down. Uh, when it stops uh, being excessively hot, then we're going to blend it. Add salt, sugar, and MSG to this if you're using the MSG, which I recommend. So we have these wild mushrooms that were uh, purchased frozen. You can also freeze them yourself, of course, if you can pick them in the forest somewhere. And uh, I'm straining through a sieve to remove the liquor. They don't need to be completely dry for this, but but you need to get most of the moisture off of them. But save save this moisture. We're going to use this. We're going to use this in just a minute. Okay. I have a nonstick pan here, heating on a medium heat. I'm adding a little bacon fat to this, rendered bacon fat first. You can add uh, just vegetable oil if you want bacon fat has uh, more flavor obviously and uh, and a uh, knob of butter and it's like a generous tablespoon of butter and uh, we're going to heat this until it begins to, to foam up as usual. When you start to see bubbles like this we're going to add the mushrooms. You don't want to have it like really 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 hot first because otherwise it'll be like an explosion when you add the wet mushrooms to it but, uh, but you want it warm first. Okay. I've got the heat uh, on, I'm turning it up to about 7 now, on 1 to 10. I'm going to cook these for several minutes. We want to drive off uh, a lot of the moisture. You probably won't drive all of it off the mushrooms because they're pretty wet after they're frozen. But we're going to drive a lot of it off and, uh, and get some browning, get some color on them. And after about 5 minutes, you get some good color here. Clearly, there's, there's a little bit of crisping going on. Now, I'm going to take these and I'm going to add them back to this liquid. And we're just going to store them like this, and this is what will end up getting added to the pasta dish later. Before you dice this celery, take a vegetable peeler and run down it to get rid of the tough, stringy parts on the outside. And then there won't be any 
uh, bits like that in the diced product. Have a very large skillet heating up um, on a medium high flame, six out of uh, one to ten. Okay, the butter's melted, but the pan is not all that hot. I'm going to add the 60 grams diced onions. Yeah, I'm going to spread them out. This is a large pan, large nonstick pan. I'm going to spread them out like this. I'm not going to stir them because we want to encourage them to get caramelized naturally. Not adding any other ingredients. Just let them cook like this. The heat is on six. In a separate pan, you've got the pasta cooking away. You're going to stop this when it gets to be about uh, al dente, just a little before al dente. This is four minutes later. Now I'm actually going to stir it one time. Break it up just a little bit here. And we'll let it continue cooking. It's been about three more minutes and you can see there's some brown spots on the onions now. That's what we want. Now we're adding the celery, 30 grams of diced celery that uh, I peeled the um, tough membrane off of the edge of. Yeah, it's been another uh, two, three minutes here, somewhere between two and three minutes since I added the celery. And I have done some stirring after I added the celery. I am stirring it once in a while. But I stirred it almost none when it was just the onion alone. But now, now it's getting some stirring. And there we are. It's about three minutes after I added the celery. Now I have those wild mushrooms that were frozen and uh, <laughs> defrosted, so they got a lot of juice with them. So we're going to cook these down now. Same heat, nothing's changed. Give it a little time here. Okay, now we're at three minutes since I added the mushrooms. Now, here's that um, tomato and onion mixture. It was uh, cooked earlier until it was almost blackened and then pureed. Now, how much of this you add is up to you? I'm going to add a little bit, a healthy a couple of tablespoons here, about half of the amount that we prepared. And just a little bit more. And stir this through and cook it. A little bit more. I'm going to make sure those mushrooms are really fully cooked. And it's been another two to three minutes. Now I'm going to add the pasta to this. It was previously cooked. How much pasta you add will depend on whether you're <laughs> Italian or American or um, now. You know, Italians like to really have it be about the pasta and not about the condimento. Americans like a little, a little bit of pasta with their, t with their sauce. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's up to you what you get used to. And uh, now, <laughs> you could just warm this through and serve it, or you can commit a terrible atrocity in the eyes of most Italians and add cream to it. Ha ha ha, I'm doing it. I am doing it. I'm adding about 60, 70 milliliters of cream here. Add as much as you want, or none at all. I'm going to stir it through. Now what you're going to see during this time is it, it tightens up. It gets too tight. So we, we add a little bit of the pasta water to it some fresh herbs and put them in there. I'm actually using tarragon, which I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's not traditional anywhere in Italy. I could be wrong, there's a lot of regions, maybe maybe somewhere, but I don't think it's traditional anywhere there. But I like it, it tastes good. You can use basil, certainly that would be traditional, or parsley. Tarragon's nice though, you don't have to follow the rules just because Italians wouldn't use tarragon. Another variation of this is with broccoli, tarragon, and cream.
The second volume of my cookbook is now available through Amazon and other booksellers. It covers the YouTube recipes from the last eight months with more in-depth information. I received requests for the procedures on all recipes and I've listened to you. Every recipe has step-by-step -step directions and of course there are recipes that aren't on YouTube. But this is not just a recipe book. Far from it as you can see from some of the topics scrolling by here. I'm certain that anyone who watches my channel and any serious cook will find this book a treasury of useful and new information you won't find anywhere else. If you want to know more about my adventures as a chef around the world and have some great laughs along the way, be sure to check out the video tour of my book, 40 Years in One Night. It's up on YouTube right now. Click the link. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.